Okay, live on YouTube. And let's check it out. Sweet. All right, we're live. So, um, yeah, we went to Running Warehouse on Monday. Is that Monday? Man, it feels already like a long time ago. And met with all the folks there, went through a full education on shoes, which is pretty cool. And we're good? Yeah, we're yeah. good. Yeah, so if you guys are just tuning in, we're just starting our YouTube broadcast. It is episode... 14. 14. Yeah. And uh, we have like... Three months in this now. Three months. It's amazing. amazing. Yeah. We got a lot going on this week. Uh, we went down, took a little road trip on Monday. I woke up at two damn early. Three four. Was it before four? It was before four. It was rough. And uh, But we wow. drove down to our friends at the Running Warehouse, and they're down in San Luis Obispo, uh, I'm not gonna lie. We first thought they were like two hours south, not like four <laughs> and a half hours south when we set that up. But it was well worth going down. We learned some cool things about shoes, and we we're gonna share some of that today. Yeah, and we learned all about shoes, about the running warehouse, which is pretty cool. And then um, we're also gonna talk about running shorts. If I can find all, yeah. of them. they're all here. Gary says, "Hey, yo, yo, guys from the UK, got your 5K pack along with my Great North Run pack. Very exciting, Gary. It's amazing." Awesome. Seeing the ship all the way across the world. Yeah. Got it on time. It's good to know that they arrived on time for the UK. I was a little nervous about that. I'm not going to lie. I was a little nervous about it too. Yeah. This is our, Gary, this is the first time that we've done uh, a lot of like shipping of, you know, hundreds and hundreds of items. And so organizing that, uh, we had a great partner down in Florida, which helped us out uh, with Virtual Stride. So yeah, yeah, it worked out really well. I'm glad you got your packet. Um, And we are all going to be... Uh, racing alongside you guys this we weekend. Are. So, yeah. This weekend, we're going to go down on Saturday, and uh, we talked about the park run, right? Yep. So, it's Saturday, we're going to join our local park run in San Francisco. I know a lot of you guys in the UK uh, do the uh, park run a decent amount. What's up, Troy from Tampa, Florida? How you doing? Tiana says, hey, y'all, great workouts, really helping me with my running. Awesome. Yeah, guys, if you're, awesome. if you're just signing in, there's two things you should do when you sign in the live show. One, drop us a comment, let us know where you're signing in from. And we'll say hi to you. And then two, there's a giveaway. All you gotta do is click the button in the description. You can do it at any time, but it just takes a second. And that way you'll be entered in our drawing for for a arm pocket armband. Now, I have to say, I'm usually not someone who's run with these in the past. Mm -hmm. And I've been running with it last week and uh, I've been kind of enjoying it. I have. Nice. I have. Yeah, you've been a big fan. All right, so we're, we're gonna get started for real and start answering your questions here in a couple minutes. And then we'll talk more about arm pocket. Totally. We got a bunch of people online. Yeah, um, Edward says, hey, check it in from Alaska. Wow. Uh, rain a five mile temple run last night in torrential rains. Man, I can't remember the last time we've seen rain out here in California. Pretty fun. Um, still waiting for my packet. No notification yet for virtual races. Edward, it should come soon. Um, yeah. Hopefully, uh, you'll uh, you'll get yours in the next uh, day or two. Yeah, and, so and Edward, just uh, send me an email at Craig at the Run Experience, or actually, you already talked to Lee, so I can always check in um, with with uh, our friends over at totally. Virtual Strides if, if you haven't got the packet. Totally, totally, totally. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, well, where's the packet that came here? The packet. Maybe we should open it live. Should we open it live? Uh. Let's do that right here. Here we go. So, for those of you guys who uh, registered for our summer virtual 5K, this should be like a screenshot. This is the packet. Thank you guys. Exactly that you will get in the mail. Um, oh, look at all you guys coming in and sweet. Into. We got the race bib with the mini poster at the back. Now, there's two different versions of this. So, some of you guys are going to get the pre-race check-in, and some of you guys might get the post-race check-in. Uh, but this is going to be your number, and then inside, whoa, slippery fingers. Just drop it on my foot. Oh, look at this crisp new metal. The one we've been hanging around right. a little bit weary now. All look right, that. and then you get the metal, as you can see in the back here as well. Um, yeah, this will go on uh, Go on your fridge. You can take the strap off, put this on. You got a little uh, bottle opener and everything. So anyway, we're super proud of this, and... We've been planning on this thing, when did we start planning this? April? Oh, yes, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a good chunk of the year, so we're super pumped yeah. to have it happen this year. Yeah. Like almost 500 people in there? I think we have almost yeah. 500 people so, registered. So all, all around the world, world, which is super, super cool. Totally just cool. to know that everybody's going to be running together and uh, tracking their, their run this weekend. So, um, guys, James, Liam, Elizabeth, Running Geek Girl. Nice name, Running Geek Girl. 
you there's some respect right there. I like that. Um, hello from Arkansas. How's it going? Where is everybody else from? Yeah, we have a few people different here. Uh, Gary says, hello from Dublin, Ireland. Waiting on mine, but not to worry. Good. Uh, Troy says, awesome. Finish your medal. Thank you. Um, ooh, Jay asks questions. Favorite old pair of running shoes you miss running in? We'll, we'll have to. Oh, for sure. Right this here. pair right here. Oh, fifth dude. grade, guys. I was you 10 years big, old. You had some big feet in fifth grade. Man, uh -huh. look at these guys. These are now what we call classics that people just wear for fashion. This right here is called a classic. <laughs> right here. But it used to be high-tech running shoe. Look at that. Yeah, I That's still remember. Bad, right? Sports Etc. was the name of the store that my dad so took me funny. to. And purchased uh, Thank you. Elizabeth so says, hey guys, Elizabeth from Athol. What's up, Elizabeth? Uh, running Geek Girl says, hello from Arkansas. Team Trent, excited for the virtual 5K. We are pumped too. Awesome. Um, Garland says, hey, San Diego here and a training club member. How you doing, Garland? Uh, Chris, hey, from Jersey. James Smith, how to break a 50-minute 5K. How to break a 50-minute 5K? We have, an, we have a, a video on how to break a 20-minute 5K. And we just filmed a 30-minute one. And a 30-minute so 5K. I'm not sure if you meant 15 minutes The strategies minutes 5K are now. actually quite different depending on where you are with your running. So, so I mean... Honestly, I if you went through our beginner running program and then our in, our thirty day challenge, pretty much guarantee that you'd bake, break a fifty minute five k. Totally, yeah. Um, so that would be one way of doing it. Uh, oh, Elizabeth said you had those two but didn't run in them. No kidding, right? Uh, Team Trent says, "Hey, what was the app to track your running?" It's a, the Charity Miles app. Those are the that's the app we've been using to to track it. We actually have a you can join and then they have teams and you can choose the run experience team. I checked the other day; we've already run collectively like fifteen hundred miles. Nice, it's pretty I crazy. Like that. That's pretty awesome. I think Lee has run half those miles <laughs> by herself. And uh, Thomas Paps from Germany, he's been he's been crushing it as well. Um, awesome. I, I love how many people. I, I want to go back and look at how many people from the virtual run are abroad, but it's a significant number. Yeah. Probably like 150, 200 people from who are, are not in the US, which is awesome. We love that the international presence is growing. We are actually hoping to open up uh, an alliance with the Australian, uh, Australian Athletics Association, which is yeah. actually linked in with the government in, in um, yeah. providing Did information training and training for stuff for the population in Australia, all the Aussies who are, in my opinion, when I was living there, very fit. So Yeah, yeah they are pretty fit. Uh, let me see. We got some questions on the virtual 5K. Uh, Run Tina Run says, I need that medal. Is it too late? <laughs> I dropped my medal on my foot already. Oh, no. Elizabeth, I almost dropped mine on my foot just now. It slid right out of the package. I'm yeah, so, be you careful. Should've, those should've those taped the heavy. package. Well, but cool, right? I... You know, I was trying to impress upon people that this is a really awesome medal, um, and it's hard to describe, but it is like it is substantial. It's awesome, and I and I look. It was my idea, so I like it. But the the magnet on the back, yeah, I was, was super enthused by that. I thought it was great. So. Anyway, uh, run Tina, run. It is unfortunately too late for this upcoming round of our virtual five k, but it is not going to be our only virtual event. Don't worry, we're already planning one for the end of the year. Yep. Think, fingers crossed. So stick around. If you're not on our email list, make sure you're on it because that's the best way you to know, get those I still have a few people that I have to send the packet to. So if somebody wanted to buy it like right now, you probably won't get the packet before, obviously before this weekend because it's Thursday. But if you would like to do it, you can drop the link in the thing. And if people like want to sign up, I'm, I'm talking about while this is going on. If you're watching this and it's not live, okay. don't sign up because you won't get it. But if you want to buy it right now, I'll pull, um, up, I'll pull up that link. You're getting special access yeah. for the 5K. Look at you. Yeah. Um, all right. So should we start pulling out all of our goodies that we're going to be talking about? Um, what we really want to talk about today, it is past 12 o'clock, so let's get into it. First yep. of all, start hitting us up with your questions. And while you are typing your questions, whether it's about training, it's about our programs, whether it's about somebody else's programs, whether it's about an injury, yeah. um, we will we'll give, do your best to, our best to give you um, our take on it. And then yeah. while we're doing that, what we first want to talk about is that we went to visit the running warehouse. And if you look at the link below uh, in the description, you'll see that we often, the running warehouse is, is the, I believe it's the largest sole online running uh, website. There, there are people really that have um, actually retail stores, but the running warehouse is actually all digital. The only retail store is actually in San Luis Obispo where we went. And 
they are huge. We didn't even realize how big they are. And they're really big. Yeah. They're like the biggest run specialty shop uh, on the internet. Yeah. And we, we, we partner with them, which means that we get some like small amount of of throwback. Really, we don't really earn any appreciable amount of money. Um, it, but what they do for us is that they send us shoes um, to review. So this is the Hoka Clayton 2. If you look on our, our website, uh, or sorry, on our YouTube channel, soon on our website, we have the, the review that just came out yesterday that I did in this shoe. And so they send us all these, these shoes to review, so we had to like, review them for you guys. And then um, we wanted to go down, you know, when we partner with people, we are a personal yeah. business. We want to go down and actually meet the people Get we're partnering with. to meet with. the guys who are doing it. And they were really nice and gave us a full education on how shoes are constructed because one of the things and the reason we partnered with them is that they have a, a really, really um, expansive... Uh, education programs for so everybody comes and works at their company they try to start them out in customer service and yeah. the customer service department is great um, because people have learned about like what are the things people go through when they're buying shoes what are the different types of shoes the construction yeah their their product coordinator we did a video with Derek um, yeah uh, oh Connor Derek and Connor yeah um, has tried on I think in his job over the last four years over like 700 pairs of shoes. He said shoes. His, that was a couple of years ago. He said it might even be over a might thousand. Be more. He's lost he track. tries on a couple pairs of shoes and then reviews them, meaning like gives the stats of how they feel, fit, and that sort of thing yeah. every day. And he's been there for four years. Yeah. So thousands, you know. I wish I mean, I wish I had something like that when I was like looking for shoes. And you know, like going to your local running shoe store, especially if you trust the guys, they're good. It's always great, but we don't always have control over the running shore, running stores near us. So this site online is is a great Standard, way. And, yeah. and the other thing that's nice is like all the information they give you about the shoes and the comments, you really get a good sense of the shoe you're buying. And then yeah. like free returns, other things like that, they wanna make sure you're in and, the right shoe. And just to be clear, like we definitely, definitely support, you know, you supporting your local store because running shoe stores are the, the home and community where people like go on group runs, have, have found out about races, kind of meet other other runners so definitely support your local um uh, you know if, if we definitely but i think that as a resource you know especially what we were saying is a lot of times when people are new they're buying a different type of shoe than they've ever bought before you kind of want to yeah. go and see it um or you order a bunch of pairs from running warehouse and, yeah. and see it in your own you can choose either, either way but if you're ordering the same pair over and over sometimes online is, is a great way to go yep. and i would say no matter which way you go the running warehouse there's a lot of um has a lot of information that's standardized around running shoes. So it's always good to check the pair of shoes and totally. see like, what do they say there? What type of shoe is it? How does it fit into your totally. quiver of shoes, so to speak? Um, let's see here. What Some of these guys are asking a few shoe questions. Maybe we could get into that let's a little bit. Let's do it. Bit. So, um, Ooh, I like that first one. What, what brands of running Melinda, shoes do you recommend? Yeah. So I only recommend one brand. No, I'm kidding. Um, the, the thing about, and this is part of what we learned, and, and, and we, I knew this already, which is think about um, running shoes kind of like, or running brands kind of like a car brand. So it, if you say, I only like to drive Toyotas, right? Well, what type of Toyota? Is it a Toyota 4Runner? Mm. Is it a Toyota Camry? And then Toyota is actually a brand that has a lot of other brands associated with it. So Altima, is Altima Toyota? I can't remember. Uh, Lexus. Lexus, right. Lexus. So Lexus is the same brand of scooter, but it's a more luxury. This is the guy who has the scooter. I, have a, I haven't had a car in eight years. So <laughs> maybe it's a bad analogy for me to be making it. But, but regardless, so when you talk about a brand of running shoes, they have most running shoe brands have different types of shoes. They have yeah. performance shoes, racing shoes, training shoes, trail shoes. And some brands like, say, Ultra have a common theme throughout their shoes. They all do all zero drop. Yep. Most running brands have variances because they're trying to hit all parts of the market. So yep. when you say, hey, I only run in, you know, a Reeboks or Asics or Mizuno, whatever it is, you know, that might be true, but if you want a new shoe, like let's say you're buying a trail shoe for the first time or a racing shoe for the first time, it might be worth your while to look across the type of shoe. Yeah, look across the category. Okay, across sure. the category as opposed to across the brand because the brand's kind of like vertical, like trainer, spike, yep. trail shoe, whatever. And if you're saying, hey, I only want these types of shoes, now when you say, I want a trail shoe, you might only have one or two options. And I think that what's nice is to figure out, you know, maybe in trail shoes you like, you know, ultras. Maybe in yep. race shoes you like Nikes. 
maybe in, in your tempo training you like ultras. And I, I think that there's a question, you know, people have this allegiance towards brands and I think really what you, even the brands are not consistent with their own shoes from year to year. They change things and they, they, they change the heel collar. It doesn't fit some people as well. So I would say that when you go into buying new shoes until you've really been in this game and really run through it, you know, it's worth it, especially yeah. when you're buying a new category of shoe to, I think to try other a, brands. I think there's a fear that when you found a shoe that works for you that uh, your your foot's going to like explode yep. if you go into another shoe or it doesn't yep. work. Um, you know, just from reviewing and trying a lot more shoes these days, I mean, even this year alone, I feel like we've been running in a ton of different shoes. Yeah. It, you'd be surprised. And, and I my eyes have been open to actually a lot of shoes that I wouldn't necessarily think, you know, worked for me. So I really like the advice on, you know, not only look at the brand, but look at the the category of shoes you're going after, and and see who's best in that category. You know, you may find best for you too, and best for you too. You know, some brands. For example, I'll give you a good example. Like uh, Reebok has is traditionally not a brand you think of as a running first brand, right? But they they are coming out with a new what is it called? Do you remember? Uh, their float. Their float. They're the coming Reebok out. float ride. And yeah. you know, we haven't actually tried them out. Have you? I've done a very, very little bit of testing. Yeah, we'll, we'll be testing them out. Um, we want to work more with them, but but we asked um, some of the guys at Running Warehouse, and they were shocked at how good it was, which yeah. is, you know, we're, hopefully, you know, Reebok has learned if they want to move in the running category, like what it takes to build a good running shoe, and they've been building shoes for a long time. And so, totally. um, you know, you can never really count people out, and sometimes that you've counted people kind of in. Saucony, I was so loyal to for forever, and I would never, ever run in Mizunu's, except for when I went to college, that's what our team was sponsored oh, by. Oh, interesting. So, so I changed. Go into and it turns out, like, yeah. You found shoes that work for you. I found shoes that work for me. Um, there you go. Yeah. So, guys, we're getting a ton of questions in here. Um, Who's putting their email in there? What's that for? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, we have uh, a bunch of different stuff, and what just was I going to say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we just, you know, the running shoes, Chris, Chris, Five asked about the Hoka shoes. Yep. You know, we just did a review yesterday. Yep. And you know, you've got it right here. I I think we were both probably naturally a little skeptical at first about oh, them. So skeptical. to put it lightly, so skeptical. One because I I was not only in on the minimalist running shoe movement. I was I feel like I was part of the very first tribe there. I mean, like uh, Barefoot Ted in Chris Douglas's Born to Run book yep. is a personal friend of mine. I used to, when he made Barefoot Shoes, I have pictures of me in his garage where he helped me cut up shoes and I would be like the test dummy for them. This is in, in Seattle like in 2007. So I was all in on that. But I, I realized that, you know, barefoot minimal running type of thing yeah. is good for some things, but like most things, like maximum shoes, not good for everything. And this was my first pair of masculine shoes. I'm not going to go through the whole review again. Like, it's yeah. all online. But, um, yeah, Hoka has been really making waves. I had no idea they were as big as they were. You know, I think one of the things that we learned when we were down at Running Warehouse that was interesting is the different ways that running shoes are able, or shoe companies are able to create a sense of stability in the ground. Yep. And with a Hoka... You know, the arch support is not a lot. There's not a ton of arch support here. So this doesn't, you know, fall into the typical, like, high stability shoe. But what it does do, and, and what they're talking about us, is the last of the shoe. And by creating a little bit of a, a wider, straighter last, they've actually found that that in and of itself creates a lot of stability. Yep. As opposed to a shoe like this where the last, you know, isn't necessarily quite as straight. Right. That to me was very, very interesting. And then you also said that your foot sits in this thing in like a little bit of like a canoe. Yep. Uh, and so that your foot doesn't go around so as like much. So when, when you sit in this shoe, you're not sitting on top of this, you're sitting inside of it. And some shoes are not that way. So this shoe, for example, the midsole, you're sitting on top of that, you're not sitting into it. And so it, it's a lot like a, like a, you know, like a seat in a car, for example, or like a bench seat, you know, it's just, there are different ways that your shoes are constructed, and all of these play into the fit, the um, the way you land, the impact, um, totally. the cushioning. You know, impact and cushioning are a little bit different. You know, this shoe where a lot of the innovation is happening is in the materials that people are using. This this blown rubber is is like a combination of EVA foam, which is yep. spongy stuff, and rubber, and it gives like pretty good grip, but it's super light. I mean, I cannot believe how shoe companies these days are able to make light shoes. This is the, like the same weight as like light. a a race shoe from when yeah. I was in high school. So totally. yeah. It's like computers are getting thinner and faster. Yep. Running shoes, the same sort oh, of thing. 
If anybody has wondered why on oh, yeah. Ultras... Oh, well, actually, before we ask, do you guys know what this is? This could be like a little trivia question. Yeah. Do we know what this little, like... What is a little nubbin at the back here? And why do you think that they have it? Um, we didn't know. Yeah. They have gator... Gator... Um, traps. traps. Yeah, this is for, like, if you're running through, like, bramble and muck and stuff in, in long trail races. You get these things to cover your socks called, called gators so you, you don't have rocks in your shoes. And then you need those to attach to your shoes. So they've thought of yeah. that. It's pretty cool. Um, are these the temps? These are the new ones? These are the temps. I just took them out. They got a little dust on them. These shoes were supposed to be mine. Yeah. Just saying. What's yeah. up, Christina? Checking in, in from size, Colorado. In David says, what do you think of the Nike 4% for the money? Uh, that shoe's insane. What? I see they're talking about the new Nike shoe. Oh, the $250 shoe that lasts yeah. 100 miles? Look, it is very unlikely that you were at the level where you need that. Yeah. I mean, uh, I remember when uh, when I was a swimmer, they had these things called paper suits, which would last oh, for one yeah, meet. Oh, yeah, yeah, And they were really expensive. You're a swimmer? Yeah, I, I swam. Didn't know that. What? Really? Oh, okay. No. Well, I triathlon. swam. I no, 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 I swam USS all growing up until I was in high school. And then basketball. And then basketball. Well, and swimming didn't make it cool. Yeah, swimming didn't make it cool. <laughs> neither um, did running, neither, by the way. Anyway, <laughs> we're still, while you guys are thinking about this thing, uh, <laughs> right here, uh, we're still waiting to hear who's it said. Blake said something about a gator. This part is not the gator. This part is the gator trap right here. Uh, but we're still waiting to hear if you guys have any idea of what this little extended it's for sharpening your bread stern. knife to get off. Exactly. Let's see what you guys have to say. Um, nope. We're not getting much. Yeah, we actually saw some cool things on some shoes. So nowadays they have this, uh, people have a lot of mesh on the top and you know, some shoes have these things called engineered mesh where the stitching is different in different places on the yeah. mesh. And because even this one kind of has it, this is a little bit different than this right here. But some of them, it's very specific so that your foot has more flexibility on the top in some areas and less in other areas. And, and it kind of, again, fits into like how the shoe fits. But there is an amazing amount of innovation and, and, uh, and differences amongst running shoes that I had not really paid attention to before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're getting, um, you Todd's know, the, the engineer is. mesh is interesting. I know, Todd is asking, what's up, Todd? So uh, <laughs> we had a, we're getting a few responses on this little, you know, thing at the end of the shoe. Uh, Jacqueline says that's the spoiler to make it look cool. It's like racing stripes. You are not far off. No. Nope. And Edward says, "Hey, I think it would be for stability and traction on downhill sections." Well done, Edward. Ding, 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 Edward. You win the shoe now. Trivia question for that's the day. what they say. We cannot attest to actually whether that actually translates into anything in real life. Well, um, I did run in it yesterday, and I was running particularly fast, but I don't know. I didn't notice it more. I'd have to pay attention to a little bit more there. Uh, but when we talked to some guys at the running warehouse, they said they looked up reviews where certain people said it was great for kicking your shoes off yeah. without your hands. Right. And then some people took a knife and actually cut this off, which seems a little excessive. I, don't, I mean, granted, of the parts of the shoe, the, the outsole is often the heaviest part because it's the most um, dense rubber. So that is adding weight to the shoe, but... Yeah. We got some other goods like mud flaps. June says, is it to keep the dirt or water from kicking up in the back? That would be great if that happened. That's definitely not going to... I know, right? It, it, it would says, be kind of like a, like, a, like a tire guard when you're on your bike, you know? The, yeah. It's the brain, brain guard. That's what it is. Yeah, Owen says, it's for scraping your foot on, on descent so you fall on your face. I mean, that, that could very well that be happen too. All right. So that was our trip to um, Running Warehouse. Um... Yeah, so we were really happy to meet them. Uh, met with Joe and Scott and Diana, Connor, Derek. We just had a whole the whole team there, and uh, it was really fun to meet them. So, yeah, kind of a family feel there. Yeah. I'm sort of so we want to continue to partner with them, support them. Um, let us know like what you your all's experiences with them um, are. I think that if I would highly recommend if you're gonna if you're gonna look at running shoes, like call them up because um, they go through such extensive uh, training. It's really really yep. impressive. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Um, okay, what so do we, do? we got a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions. We got some other things we want um, to talk about. I want to talk about Arm Pocket. Yes. So Arm Pocket is our sponsor today. That's why we're going to be giving away one of these. Now, I am somebody who uh, never ran with my phone up front, but then when I started with the run experience, we take photos, and for a number of other reasons, having uh, mostly that. Um, Tracking my runs on Strava, etc. If you didn't et film your run, did the run happen? Yeah, we have this joke that if you didn't get any media on your run, uh, did it actually happen? Yeah. Um, Lee is very good at doing that. 
Yeah, she's very good. She's very good at doing that. I think she's had lots more runs than us by that by that uh, token. So, arm pocket. I, I want to show you what I used to use. Oh, interesting. Yeah. This is a sad, sad piece of equipment right now. Uh, where is this? Okay. So, this I got online. Okay. I don't even... I It's Supcase, I think. Uh, this is off of um, Amazon. And I'm comparing it to the, the arm pocket because this is what I used to run in. Mm. Now, the things I did like about this is that it's, you know, it was, um, it's silicon and um, it did hold my phone. Uh, my phone never fell out of it. But the thing is, is the attachment to my arm, you can see this, how it's all like kind of scraggly. I don't know if you can see that in the video. Like this, like my phone was moving all over the place. And I did find one spot on my arm right here where like it I it, move. where it wouldn't move and and I kind of just dealt with it that way and then as time wore on this thing got a little bit like less stiff mm. and so then even that part it would like start folding under itself like this so kind of a pain in the butt um it, you know this was probably 20 bucks or something on Amazon you know and it it did what the very you know what I needed then I tried this guy out and I was very pleased that the that they had solved a bunch of the problems that I had um, I had been complaining about it. Yeah. I didn't even realize there were like much better versions of this. So I, you know, from what I see, there are like this is kind of one of those things where um, Arm Pocket has a bunch of competitors that are just you know manufactured in China and like sold on Amazon, and sometimes it's hard to differentiate. But Arm Pocket is a brand definitely where you can see by the construction yeah. of it that they've put a lot of time and effort into uh, making it a high quality product. Whereas this, you know. Um, yeah, it's, 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 not it's not bad. It's not bad. It's just that it's definitely not the same level of quality. You know, so. one of the things that I always check for is like zippers and how well the zippers work. Yeah. And you know, sometimes you can tell if it's like a cheap zipper. And these actually are pretty, are pretty smooth. They're pretty zippy, I might have to say. And I'm someone who who has been running with this the last week. I normally don't run with an armband, and it took me a moment to figure out where I wanted this on my arm, where I was happy with it. But uh, that was actually one of my complaints, actually. Oh, the zipper for you, you could hear the rattling. Well, I just had my Bluetooth headphones in so I couldn't hear that rattling stuff. Okay. And then the other thing I would say is that it's, they've got some pretty small little uh, ports on the bottom for your headphones, oh, which I didn't might even be a that. pain in the butt to set up. Uh, in the world of Bluetooth headphones now, though, like I didn't notice it at all. Um, oh, that I, I didn't realize. I was just going to put out the If I had wired headphones, I would just put out the top. Yeah. I didn't really even try to like swipe my phone like through the screen. I thought... It kind of technically works. So the one pain in the butt with this, and maybe this is just with armband, uh, you know, in this general, is gonna, this is going to be pull with, the phone with out. yeah, this is going to be with any any sort of um, thing that has your phone in a case, unless it's, it's exposing the button on your phone. This button, oh, I'm going to show what's on my phone now. Hold on. Huh, there you go. Uh, all right. This button requires your thumbprint in order to work it. Okay, you actually yeah. have to feel your finger on there. So if you have a piece of plastic over it, you it's can't work, get yeah. into your phone. That being said, the thing about this is that it is super easy to take. Like when I have this on here, I'll put it on. It's super easy to get your phone in and out. And when I was running in my other phone, with yeah, that strap. In here, I'll just put them both on. You ready? Oh, geez. Yes. Are right, we doing? We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Both things on here. Okay. This is what the other one was. Okay, see, yeah, this is kind of annoying because it. Um, I didn't know how bad this was until I tried yeah. the arm pocket when I was oh, like, man. Oh, yeah, and you really see it flop yeah, around. Yeah, flop it. Just um, around. Okay, anyways, as, we, as so, we talk about this, and before he goes into yeah. the different comparison, uh, there is a link down oh, in the right. description where you can enter in for a giveaway. We're gonna, how many of these are we giving away? I'm just giving away one now, but we will be giving out more in future episodes. More in future episodes. So yeah. we're gonna give away one today, so make sure you hit that link, that Gleam link. There's different ways to get multiple entries in to increase your chances of arm pocket And they're like success. 45 bucks online, so of yeah. course if you don't win, you can always pick one up. Um, yeah. Anyway, think, back to the yeah, comparison. So, so when I had this one on, what I would do is that my phone being here, and I'd be like, oh, and I'd try to move it. And it, the reason I would do this is because taking it in and out of here is a pain, right? Mm. Like to slide my phone in and out of this <laughs> is a problem. So I'd do this, or I'd have to take this off, oh, right, this, change my music, and then put it back and on. And then again. put it on, which was, you know, not what I want to do in the middle of my run. No. What I do like about this, so yes, it'd be great if I could 
do this. But then again, yeah. this is not a great angle to use my phone from anyhow. You could, you, you I could adjust it, my though. music for my headphones, or I could unzip it, pull it out here. And I don't take off my case with this because I like that too. That I didn't. I could leave my case on. Yeah. Throw that in or there. Or if you have a pop socket, it still fits. Pop socket still fits. Yeah. So you got a TRE pop socket. That thing will still fit in there. Put this You're in. getting caught up on the little inside rubber. Oh, there you go. Oh, am I? Yeah, I still getting caught. Yeah, the inside rubber is an interesting. I don't know. You, yeah. You put that in there. I would actually there like we clip go. that out. And then yeah. zip it in. You're good to go. Yeah. So if you have a smaller phone, they have different ones for different phones, but. Um, yeah, there's a little piece of rubber in here. It's so much easier to take this off. A little piece of rubber in there that you can slide your phone in behind. Totally. I don't think I need it for my phone. I, I would probably take that out, but whatever. You know, um, there's just little spots do. for keys. Anyhow, we don't talk forever about this, but Arm Pocket is um, something to check out because we, we've we been liking it better than my old version. Yeah. Now, the more important part is if you're gonna carry your phone with you, and we definitely recommend every so often, go for a run with no technology, no yep. watch, no phone, no headphones, just go on a run with you, your breath, and your shoes. Your shoes from fifth grade, yeah. your first pair of shoes. There was a point there. in time, a time in my life, I don't do this anymore, where I would uh, put on oh, a pair of running are shorts. Are going there? Yeah. We're going there. And I would walk out the door, and that meant I had no shirts, no socks, no shoes, just a pair of shorts. And there, I used to live near a lake, so the reason I did that is I'd go running and then I'd go jump mm. in the lake, and didn't have to worry about my stuff. And, uh, you know, I don't do that as much anymore because I don't live near a lake. <laughs> but uh, it was awesome, and you I love the, the fact. Oh god, I was thinking about going to Ocean Beach and jumping in the water. Yeah, I just right. have to crawl into a ball and die. Um, but you know, there's something nice about going out, out with no technology. But for the majority of you, I know you probably take your phone with you when you run because a lot of us use Strava or Runkeeper or other tracking. I know I totally. do. Um, we actually have a Strava group, by the way. So if you're not in our Strava group, you should join. You should. And um, and the, the thing about that is if you're going to do it, um, you got to figure out a way to carry your phone. Nate right carries there. his phone in his hand. Yeah, sometimes I do that. And actually, Jeff just asked this from Facebook. Have you ever seen anyone wear them on their forum so they can access the screen better? I haven't done that, but actually, there's a way to like throw your thumb in here and so that I've got my phone sort of on my palm and I could run you know, this way just so you guys can see. I saw so pictures on the website it. of people doing this. I mean... Yeah. Okay. Sure. I. Yeah. <laughs> We'd have to try that out to see, but I'm Maybe sure there's someone. I'm sure there's a skinny. I know, right? I'm sure there's someone out there that is that has figured that out. Yeah. Um, should we do some questions? Yep. Let's do it. Let's do it, guys. So you guys have a bunch of questions. We are gonna go uh, through this here. I'm scrolling up a little bit because I want to pick some. Uh, Teresa Brown says, does the way your shoe uh, is laced make a difference? Yes. Um, if you go Craig watch our review. Nodding emphatically. If you go watch your review of this, one of the major things I had was I had a problem with the fit of it until I adjusted to do what's called a lace lock, which I didn't mm. have time to describe in that video, but I will show you now. Okay. If you guys don't know how to do this, you can find this. It's called a lace lock or an ankle lock. So... The, you lace per normal, right? And then on the last loop, you'll notice that there's two loops that are kind of horizontal here. They're do not you want to undo one line. and actually do it? So yeah, okay, see. sure. Okay, so. I feel like even I'm confused by this when oh, really? you see it. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, so this oh, is you, where... That's like super lock. Where that's like the double Windsor tie. Really? This is how I just do, do the. It. I just do like, you know, the poor man's Bluetooth. I just like thread this way and I get a nice lock when I go here. I don't think I'm doing it right, guys. Okay, that, that is one way of doing it. Look, you can, like, when you go in, I'm gonna show you right here. Yeah. When you go into the shoe, you can go down this line, and then you can continue to the last line if you want, and you'll notice that there's always a eye hole that is a little bit off the normal beaten path, so to speak, right? Mm. Why do they put that there? So, you can go in normal lace it just all the way through there. That's not what's called a, that is not what it's called, I can't, they can't see my face. That is not what a lace lock is. What a lace lock is, is when you go out, let's say I'm on my inset, but I'm on the left-hand side, right? So normally I would cross over again, but instead I make a little loop in here. Oh, interesting. And I'm gonna try to do this one-handed. Okay. All right. And what this does is now it creates a loop there. And you see I've done it on both sides, right? But now the shoelace is in the inside. Yeah, I so, see that. So now what I do is I cross over and use this as an eye hole. Huh. Right? Pull that through. Yeah. Pull that through. That. This, guys, if you don't know how to do this, this is like a... 
That's a this game might be changer. 102, but this is a game changer in terms of ch this is free. You don't you don't pay for anything. There's no new shoelaces, nothing. All your running shoes probably do this. Now you do need to have a decently long pair of laces, right? For yes, and the only company I know that routinely gives me laces that are too short to do this is Ultra. Just go buy some new laces, I know. laces, or take your laces out of your old shoes and put them in your new shoes. And now that you have this lock, now you think that this is. It does not look like this is a big deal, but the difference in how this hugs your ankle yeah. is is a light and day. Can you night explain just... why you want more tension up here and less tension down here? Because that's yeah. one of the things you're getting. Because with normal laces, when you try to snug up the the forefoot of the shoe, yep. you end up snugging up everywhere, yep. and then your your forefoot's cramped, and that's not always ideal. Yeah. So. I mean, for this shoe specifically, and this is this will vary depending on who you are. Yep. It'll vary depending on the shoe. But for this shoe, what was happening is when at first I it came lace, I just went out the door, and this is all in the video. But it the what happened was like every time I landed, it would buckle. Mm. It would buckle like 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 I'd see the shoe gently go like this. In fact, I have a I have a picture of it. I don't know. Yeah, if I Gary can find says it. he uses this to stop all the time for heel slippage. Yeah. Uh, Teresa says game changer. But I, I would just I, my the the heel collar, which is this area right here, mm. would just buckle kind of like this every time. And you can imagine why. Look how much foam there is here. It's all soft. I'm landing f hard into the shoe, and it's pushing down and deforming the shoe like this. I didn't like that. It didn't feel good. It felt like my foot was destable, like unstable. Yeah, moving around. So the first thing I did was I just tightened all the laces. Did not did not work. Then I, you know, this is a problem. This is nothing to do with Hoka. Yeah. This is not their fault. This is just my preference of how I want my shoe to fit. Sure. And so I have to figure out like what works for this shoe. Now, if they had not constructed the shoe properly, they didn't have the eye holes, didn't give me laces, whatever. It, they didn't have that ability. Okay, that's a different thing. But most right. shoes do, and this is. You know, nobody's coming and tying your shoes for you. You have to tie them yourself, just like you have to lace them yourself. So this is part of like learning to- I just want Velcro. When is Velcro coming back? Yeah. No, don't do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so lace locking your shoes. Try it out. It's not gonna work. I mean, it may not be something that you like. It you know, may be for some shoes Elizabeth, not Elizabeth brings up something good, and, and I've had to play with this a little bit too. Um, she says that my feet go numb when I try that, and my heel still slips slightly. So you can create enough pressure on the top of your foot that you know you will create too much pressure so to a certain degree there might need to be some adjustments that you create there are also different ways so look at this how this lat lacing pattern sure right there are different ways to lace your shoes you can go crossover and i'm going to leave it to you you can go look up online and yeah. find all the different ways I feel like to that's lace your shoes video we need to do we maybe yeah we should do that we okay so there are lots of ways to la to la lace your shoes to help us support. there are also different ways to tie your shoes i don't know if you know this but i used to be really into not tying as a hobby and what, in balloon animals, we've even gotten into balloon animals and guitar guys. Yeah, that's so coming. so most people will tie their shoes like this. You want to hold that for me? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna give you a quick lesson on how to tie your shoes. You ready? Okay, so I feel like you are just like Craig, so, guys. You wouldn't believe it, but Craig doesn't drink coffee. But by how excited he is about explaining heel cupping and shoe tying, okay. I think he does. I'm very passionate about people <laughs> tying their shoes wrong. This is what most people do wrong. They do. They half knot like this, yep. and because they've gone right over left, what I do, what they do is they take this, and then they go uh, right over left, uh, no, that's the right way, I'm so they used go to doing right it the right over way. Left, and then I'm left. used to doing it the right way, and so it's hard for me to do it the wrong way. Okay, so I'm going left over right here, right? Yep. And Correct. then what happens is people go left over right again, because you're, you're used to that pattern, so you go left over right again. Now, this is incorrectly tied, and why is what is incorrect? That is a very weak knot from the perspective, of it. it'll come loose very easily. And the way you can tell is that it's horizontally, it's, or it's it's it's, it's, it's vertical. parallel to the to the shoe, uh, uh, perpendicular to the shoe. Oh, parallel to the shoe. You're right. Parallel. Mm -hmm. And what you want is a knot that sits like a. You want a square knot is what you need. Well, so this I'm way. Learning something every day. I didn't know that Craig swam. I kind of knew the, the, hold this for the a short thing. Okay. Hold this thing. The way to tie your shoes is if I go left over right the first time, I'm gonna hold this or right or left, you, you just have to go the opposite way. So in this case, I went left. I'm going to do it again. Yeah. I left went over right. Left over right. Tie shoe. And then I go the opposite. left under, or in this case, right over left, but under. And now when I pull it through, you'll see that it is oriented this way. What? Now, for the advanced folks out there, my mind is kind of blown right now. I don't even when know. When you're racing, this is, you don't have to do this every day, but when you're racing and you don't want your shoes to get, to, get untied, hold this for a second. What most people do will, was they'll go like this 
and then they'll do it again, and then no, tie it again. Knot. Just tying knots is just bundling the material on top of itself. It doesn't actually mm -hmm. make it a stronger knot from the perspective. Of, like people who are into knots have like actual tensile strength and like figure out what the strength of a knot is, and that actually does not improve it. What you want to do is something that Craig has a knot blog. You should check it out. I have Craig's lots of knots. knot books. I'll, Craig's, I'll bring them out. Craigsknots.com. I'll show them to you in a second. Okay, so let's say you tie, uh, you, you're doing that, you did the first loop. You're not, you're not holding this I'm up. Holding this. Sorry, Gary is saying, whoa, uh, he, Elizabeth just said mind blown. Okay. So you've got some good, you've Wait, got some good. This is, uh, that, that's level one. This is level two. It's race day. You don't want your <laughs> shoes to come un unlocked, but you don't want a massive knot of things so that you can't untime at the, at the finish line. So what you do is on your second loop, instead of doing one around, you create the bunny ears, just like when you were a kid, right? You still go the opposite direction. So I went left over right, so I'm not going right over left. But instead of doing one loop, I put it through again. What? And this creates a super strong. This will not come out undone. Not Get it? Through... Not will, it not will not come, come undone. undone. Right. But at the same time, if I yank hard enough on this, it will. It comes out. Huh. Right? That That's how so you cool. create a really strong knot for race day that is not like a double, triple, like, you know, like we used to do when we were kids. Man. Hang on for a second. He's coming back, so I feel like we have more knot tying. Uh, crazy, right, guys? Isn't that amazing? I learned things too. I think I've been tying my shot when using correctly. Oh, geez, here we go. This is one of my favorite books <laughs> Knots and Rope Work. Over 200 tying knots. This is where I've learned most of, uh, they have, like, you know, all kinds of knots. The Bolin. The Bolin's a great the one. The Bolin's a great one. That's a one we yeah, use. Yeah, and you can a have lot. different bends, bends sheep hitches, shanks, hitches. Turn, like this, this book. Go pick this up at your local your local bookstore. Uh, you know, I just want to let you know that this is not. This was like a real hot. I love knots. It's can great. you guys? Can you guys just like picture like a quiet Thursday evening at Craig's place? He's got like a candle lit. Maybe he's got like a little glass of something. He's got his like knot tying book open, and he's just you know. I I used to carry a small a smaller book in the car whenever I was in a car, and I take a couple pieces of rope, and I could learn different knots while you know because it's kind of like a thing you can do <laughs> while you. Whatever. Aaron says, "Why do you have that book?" And basically, when are we selling it? You know the funny thing he said. It says you were a scout. I quit the Boy Scouts no less than four times, uh, but I really did like the knot. Their their portion. knot game wasn't advanced enough. Yeah, they exactly. were just going too slow. Yeah. He wanted to do two knots a week, not just one. Um, <laughs> Running Geek Girl says I feel like my life has been a lie after learning that. I feel too. I feel like I have been cheating everyone because okay. I don't know this stuff. I'm glad that we got into the knot tying. That was really good. Man, I'll, I'll that tell was you. Like, we like went down that path. That was I, pretty good. I'll give you more lacing tips next time. I love that. So we had a few different ones here. There was something about hip pain that I wanted to go into. So we got into lacing um, configuration. Um, okay. This is a uh, fast. Faster 436. Faster 436. Any tips for hip pain? Half marathon is six weeks out. Mm. So one thing to always plan ahead is that when you are in that like, you know, six to two weeks out of your race, like you've been training pretty hard and whether you've had good habits in terms of mobility and strength and injury prevention along the way or, or not, this is where everything starts to catch up, right? You're, you're kind of feeling maximal levels of fatigue, you know, running technique tends to slip a little bit. You're tired, so maybe you're laying on the couch and you're not, you know, stretching and things out. Six weeks out is basically a time period where you've been training enough that you've had stimulus, meaning you've had hard yep. workouts that stimulated your body to grow and, and, and stretch your cardiovascular and muscular system, but you're not done with your training because you're probably still going for long yeah, runs. And the hard training. stuff is coming ahead, right? Yeah. So that, that six to three week window is, is where you're really buckling down. So you want to get ahead of any of those. Number one, expect aches and pains to occur, right? Because that's going to happen. Yep. And number two, we need a plan to get to get ahead of it. So without knowing too much specifically about your, your hip pain, one of the things that I would strongly suggest, and this is something that we have in all our programs, is some sort of daily mobility strategy or injury prevention program. And we like to promote the idea of Netflix and Mobilize. You know, we're all busy. Try to take some of the time at the end of the day if you're just relaxing before you go to bed 
and you know take that 10 to 15 minutes to work on something and if it's your hips you know working on foam rolling or smashing your quads working on the couch stretch because you can literally search for these terms on a YouTube channel and videos are going to show up to yep. show you how to we do it. We have a it. foam roller review coming up. Foam roller review coming up. all of our toys. We have a whole bucket of toys over there yep. that um, we're going to be talking about on a YouTube video. But I, what I do is that, you know, in the evening I'm watching like some news shows, comedy news shows, whatever it is. I'll flick on a YouTube um, clip or whatever and I'll sit on the floor as if I was sitting on the couch. And as soon as I sit on the floor, it kind of prompts me to like, okay, cool, I'm going to like stretch something out or like put a ball on something, roll on it, anything for about 10 minutes. Um, exactly. And you know, it's, it's so valuable. And, and in the short term, like we really want to focus on that injury prevention mobility stuff. Of course, there's a reason why your hip is maybe on fire in the first place. And that could have something to do with, with, you know, daily lifestyle habits. If you have a long car commute, you're sitting in a desk a lot, uh, and your hips are just chronically tight. Um, and you know that can affect your running technique. So making sure that you know you're paying attention to your posture and your hip position, and using some strength training to reinforce that. I'm talking big picture here. We can color in the details in a second, but that stuff needs to be happening, yep. and it needs to be happening for most of us on a weekly basis. Actually, it doesn't matter who you are. You could be the fastest runner. It's your work might look a little different from a beginner runner, but that that work's got to be there. Yeah, so somebody had mentioned, hey, is all this information available for free? It is. The show is free. <laughs> it's all for free. But if you want to go to another level, uh, I'm always curious to how many of you guys have heard of our training club. We are working on a yeah. new site redesign. We're kind of We're rehashing really all of how we explain this to you guys. Because what's happened is that over the last few years, we've created so many programs that it's gotten confusing in terms of like, how do we like talk about them and tell people all of what we have? We have so many things. Totally. But the nice thing is that now we've all lumped everything together. It's all just one thing, which is the training club. Everything's in there. And um, and I'll, here, I'll show it to you one second. Uh, how do you do this? There we go. So this is the training plans page. Um, let me see if I can just move this down a little bit so you can see the title. Yeah, so you guys get a little sense there. Cool. So... Um, this is our training plan page. The training club has all of our coaching. You can get an injury consultation here, uh, which is, uh, I don't know how to, is right there. I don't know. I guess you can, you can kind of see it. Kind of see it. So the injury consultation is there. Um, the gait analysis, both of those are with Dr. Kyle Bowling. If you guys have any specific injury questions, I highly, highly recommend setting up an appointment with him because it's 30 minutes one-on-one -on -one just with him over Skype and he'll run you through things and give you a full um, uh, set of exercises and things you can do afterwards. You can go back and talk, talk to him again. It's, totally. it's one of my favorite things that we've started providing for people. The training club is our bundling all of our programs. So that is our beginning running program. Uh, there's actually more programs that are on this page right now because we keep updating and keeping adding stuff. But beginning running, 30 day challenge, half marathon, full marathon, uh, strength program, yep. um, nutrition challenges. And Based on what your guys' running goals are, we can suggest how long you should be a training club member for and the yep. programs you should do. And we wanted to build it this way because, you know, a lot of you guys, you don't, you don't think of it always in the beginning, but you get to your program, you just get ramped up, and then the program ends, and then you're like, well, what do I do next? Yep. And, and we, we got that covered for you, right? So we can actually show you how to recover after your race what you should be working on in between races. And inevitably, a lot of you guys get the bug where it's like you're not just racing once a year, you're racing multiple times. Yep. So we can kind of keep you going. And you're going to find that you can make a lot of improvement in you know eight weeks, 12 weeks, 16 weeks. But in a lot of respects, you're really just getting the ball started, right? You're a four-month-old who's just learned to walk. You know, you're walking, well, yeah. four-year-old, four-month-old. Four months old can't walk. Nine months. Nine months or so. Yeah. Nine months or anymore. I started walking nine months. I'm like, I'm like one year. <laughs> yeah. He started not tying it ten. Yes. Exactly. And then has looked back. He was doing his own he's tying his own diapers. Yeah. Cloth diapers. So not. if you are if you are not if you're just dabbling and you're like you're doing your own training program or you're not training for something specifically, we have a weekly running tune up, which is is not a full on program, but we just give you new workouts every Sunday. So there's three workouts, it's your running, strength, mobility, uh, and and technique. It's all the parts that we think you need. But it's kind of like a maintenance place to be. Totally. And so when people hop out of the training club, a lot of times they'll, they'll stay in the weekly running tune-up and just add that to their running. Um, it's one thing that's that I, I actually use quite a bit. So totally. 
So if you're in the training club, then you get access to our community site, which is all of our programs here. And each one of these programs varies from two weeks all the way to four months for that marathon program. Uh, there's nutrition stuff in there, and I can see the nutrition at the bottom. Hold on, let me take that off. There we go. Clear that out. There we go. Um, so yeah, the the um, nutrition challenges. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make you smaller here. Uh, how do I do this? There we go. Oh hey. There so you we can go. see now us there, small. and then you can see our stuff here in the corner. Yeah. So these are our programs, and and um, you know we are trying everything we can to make this uh, as simple as possible. Um, all this stuff is available on our mobile app, yep. which is uh, is free, and that includes all the stuff then on our blog, plus all this stuff if you're in the training club. So. Um, Yes, we put out tons of free content every week on YouTube, on Facebook. We do this show. It's all free. Um, the way that um, people work with us even more is if they, if they get into one of these programs. And then you get, the, you get invited into our training group on Facebook. And that has coaches. You can ask questions. Um, you know, If anybody is a training club member, we, we prioritize them in terms of answering questions here on the live show. We have coaching calls with special guests. Lots yeah. of different stuff um, for people who are in the training club, and uh, yeah, yeah, we just we just sort of want you to check it out. We love answering your questions. Did you uh, put a link in there for them? I did. I can for yeah. the the training club. Yeah. I'll make sure I throw that in there so you guys can see it. Um, yeah, so that is the 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 answer on like, hey, is all this for free? So much stuff for free. Um, our goal here is to uh, really improve the way people run, and we think that. If we show you what we can do with you over just some YouTube videos, imagine what we can do when we give you full, you know, full running programs that include all the different pieces and have it organized for you and have, you know, coaches yeah. that answer your questions. Yeah. So that, that's our, our philosophy. Tim, Tim said this earlier. I did my first marathon on last Sunday. Thanks for your tips. Got 354. Nice. Broke four hours. That's cool. Well done, man. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that he took tips from our, our YouTube videos. I wonder if so. He you actually know, trained with us. Yeah, yeah. like th there's a full marathon training program which has all that stuff built in. So next marathon, try it out. Oh, so this is a little Craig's Crazy Kitchen section. Yep. Uh, Ed asked. He asked us earlier. Hey guys, awesome show. Do you find counting calories helps or focus on eating good food? I do not count calories. I have done it a little bit in the past, but uh, it it just makes me weird. I, yeah. I am so avoiding of counting calories that I try to avoid even like things where they show me the calories because I don't want it in my hand. My mind will all of a sudden like see a banana and be like, oh, that's about, I don't even know how many calories yeah. it is. And I don't want to do that with my food. I would rather focus on putting in really good quality food and food that I is tasty and that, that is good for me and, and concentrate less on the quantity. I believe that if you have higher quality food, it's, you don't end up eating as much. the... The equation and the sense of counting calories is the logic is imperfect, and I draw a parallel to counting calories as to, you know, the the calculator that compares your run weight with your run speed, and that says mm -hmm. if you if you are you know one pound less, you are x three to five seconds per mile faster. You know, our system is is far more complex than that because the yeah. weight that you're losing could be weight that is strengthening and stabilizing you. So a lot of you um, could gain weight and you know run faster. Or your weight doesn't change, but the composition of you does change, yep. right? And then all of a sudden you're faster. So and looking at these numbers, like it, it's, it doesn't necessarily, it's not as productive as we think. And it's also like you have to think you're putting forward effort to do that. And that effort can be directed elsewhere or can be directed towards counting calories. Lots of times, most often times, counting calories is a short-term thing because you're not going to count calories for the rest of your life. What we do in our nutrition challenges, which we do in our training club, um, they're like 30-day challenges that come, we come out with every so often. Uh, what we try to do in our nutrition challenges is build habits. So try like try this new food, incorporate it into your breakfast. Yep. Try incorporating this this kind of um, like you're doing meatless Mondays, yep. right? Just try things out. Maybe it's six, maybe it doesn't. But over time, what you want is 
the accumulation, all the effort that you put in during 2017, you want it to affect the way that you eat in 2018. Totally. You don't want it to be like, hey, I spent all this effort counting calories from you know May until September of 2017. But then I was like, damn, that sucks. I don't want to do this all the time, yeah. so I don't do it anymore. And then you know, there's really no benefit after that. And, and I, really try to, to I really try to balance between the things I'm going to go hard on and things I'm going to be a little bit easier myself. And, and I'm the personality of like, I would rather do a much more moderate change knowing that I could sustain it for a longer period of time yep. and not have to stress myself. I was like, I'm going to totally cut out this thing I've been dependent on you know, for a month. It's like, maybe I'll start for a day or maybe I'll drink less for yeah. that day if it's like coffee or something like that. I, I like to go into these like little, you know, trial periods where I'm eating like... Oh, I know. Yeah. Those are crazy, crazy. So like, you know, lately... Sardines. Sardines. I love sardines now. I eat them once a day. And... What I do is I try to try on these habits and see if they stick. Like the my green smoothie habit has been around for like 10 years now. I started in 2008, almost 10 years. And um, I've been having smoothies for breakfast instead of cereal since then. The amount of vegetables in my life has increased by like 10x because now I just cram that Vitamix down with, you know, vegetables and, and some, some berries and stuff. So... Um, yeah, that's what I think about counting calories. I think there's other places to put your time. Um, we got a few more questions, guys. We're going to be on for another 10 minutes or so, getting through as many questions as we can. Rapid fire? Um, rapid fire. Guys, if you haven't entered the Arm Pocket giveaway, hit that Gleam oh, yeah. uh, link down below. We're going to be doing this drawing in about Let's nine how minutes. Many people, how many you can still entries enter. we have? We only have... Maria from... Oh, wow. We have 1,400 entries. We have a well lot done. of entries. Well done, guys. All right, good job, um, guys. Uh, who is it? Maria says this is an earlier comment from Facebook. Just came home from camping. Knots are critical for putting that canoe on the trailer or the roof. Definitely is. Uh, okay, so uh, X Sinclair says it's more of a comment. I'll be looking to the Hoka Clayton too because of your review, Craig. I think I need awesome. a maximalist shoe to jump back into running after a long hiatus. Thanks, guys. Um, you also want to pay attention to strengthening that body of yours and and not just you know, trudging through the miles as you go out the door, but making sure you get some good run techniques. So, so pay attention to our videos. And of course, we would love to have you as a training club member. So jump yeah. into our programs. We literally have a beginner running program that would be perfect for you and your situation. And, and what Nate is alluding to here is um, when you have an issue, like it is very tempting, especially with our society being the way it is now. To just like, solve it with a shoe. Solve it with a purchase. Yeah. You know, because it may not be shoes. It may be, uh, what do you call the sleeves? I saw people with this morning. Yeah, the compression Compression wear. socks. Or it can, and none of these things are bad things, right? It's just that we think that our philosophy at the run experience is that your body is the thing of highest priority. Yep. It is the thing of highest value. And it's the most adaptable. So focus on getting yourself in a position of, of strength, mobility, and yep. form, and technique. Strong, stable, healthy, healthy. single leg exercises. Every Everything week. else is gravy. And it doesn't mean you shouldn't buy that pair of shoes or you shouldn't have yep. those compression sleeves or whatever it is. Totally fine, but just don't look into it as the yeah. first thing you go Well, the to. shoes will perform even better when you do that. 100%. Um, so, a few other things. Team Trent says, do you guys have a particular tracker that you like? I uh, was using a Garmin that died, been looking into Suunto watches, but I really want to be able to track my heart rate. Yeah, so we actually reached out to Suunto and to Garmin to send us some of their stuff so that we can try it out. We'll let you know. I used to be a yeah. Garmin guy. Uh, right now, I don't track heart rate. Uh, it's actually a lot of runners don't. It's kind of interesting. It's it's you know the cyclists and triathletes tend to do it a little bit more. Runners don't tend to do quite my, as much. My thing that I do, and I've done this for a long time, um, is is heart rate as soon as I get up. I want my resting heart rate because if my resting heart rate all of a sudden spikes, it usually means a I'm fighting something off or getting sick, or b I have trained really hard and I'm too tired that morning to yeah. have more stimulus. A way to a way to assess your readiness to train for the I, next I day. I think resting heart rate is a, is an amazing thing to track in the morning. Yeah. I have a a, a Wi-Fi scale, W I I we yeah. we things we we things W I I T I T H I N G we things scale. You have and another gadget in your house, really? <laughs> The so one-time purchase has lasted me years. So. It's been so good. Um, June says, hey, love your channel and the information you provide. I tweaked my lower back yesterday. Any advice on how to stretch or make it feel better? Mm -hmm. So uh, low back tweak could be a few different things, but one of the things that is super important to go after are your hips. Uh, a lot of times there's a big relationship between tight hips, tight hip flexors, 
and a direct pulling on the low back. So, you know, from a more active thing, uh, leg swings and hip circles are great. That couch stretch comes back again because that can open up your hip flexors and release that low back pain. There's something called gut smashing. Mm. And we have it in some of our programs. I don't think we have any public videos on it yet. It's um, do. It's a good one to do. But there's a way to, to lay on something preferably a little softer than a lacrosse ball and a little bigger. You know, something like a small soccer ball would be ideal. Oh, and be in you're going to like on. inhale into this ball and then you're going to relax and let yourself sink in. And when you sort of let yourself relax, you're going to you know, basically roll out your, your you guts. And this is gonna go, you know, sort of right here. And I like to lay on the ground where I'm gonna inhale, hold for a certain number of seconds, and then exhale. And as I exhale, and I'm going to either side of my belly button, and that's gonna go after a lot of things, but one of the muscles we're trying to hit is your psoas. Yeah. Um, and guys, this is a strategy we actually learned from, uh, you know, Dr. Kelly Starr at a Mobility Wad. And uh, he's got some great content if you ever want to check it out as well. The thing about gut smashing is that it's going to feel awful because you are actually moving all the stuff in your in your stomach. It, it is You're pushing on that. So it'll feel, but what you should look for is you're going a little bit over from your belly button. And when you get in there, you will, you know, especially if it's tight, you'll feel... Yep. You'll feel something, and what I feel usually is that this this psoas muscle runs all the way down yep. into your groin. So you'll usually like I when I push on it and I get in there, I usually feel it in like weird places, you'll feel like it in up weird or spots. down. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you'll feel all that, and you'll step. know that you're on that that psoas muscle. You're in that psoas, but that's also like part of our our injury prevention program that you can you know that's definitely true, check out, which is part of the training club, which is part of the training club. So we we got you there. All roads and all of our answers eventually. Because honestly, that's where we put all our time is into to making that thing really, really good. So. Um, oh, Steven says, hey, these guys helped me realize that heel striking was the cause of my hip pain I had for months. Upping my cadence was key. That's another um, example for of me too. long-term strategies for for work. Sometimes we use a metronome. I've been using a Lumo Run still. Yeah. That nice. little toy, and I really like that. Yeah. Um, Steven, that's awesome. Lumo Run, we had a review that I did just um, last week on our YouTube channel. A couple weeks ago. Yeah. Cool. Um, All right. We are three minutes, guys. It is rapid, rapid fire yeah. time. Uh, Brandy says, well, don't you know, finally know how to use those last eyelets. I think we really blew some minds with that I'm little shoe tying. We're going to have a shoe tying segment, tying a thing. knot segment every week on um, the live show now. Elizabeth comments, hey, that's really good to know using your resting heart rate to determine if you're ready for a rough workout. Yeah, it's really good. And it's one of those things, Elizabeth, that at first... It's not the, the number itself, but it's getting in the habit of checking the numbers and seeing the variations, right? Because you're, you're going to get a notice. You're going to start to know what is a normal variation for you and versus, you know, where is something starting to go off or go wrong? Yep. Let's see here. Uh, David from Facebook says, um, actually, let's get Ed, Edward first. Have you heard of Stride? It's supposed to be able to track running power in a similar way that cyclists track power. Oh. You know, Edward, like... Power in running is a new concept, and I love it. And guys, this is the idea that a lot of times we look at pace. We're, we're looking at pace from the perspective of you're on a, a flat ground. Let's say you're running an eight-minute mile. That eight-minute mile on flat ground is going to be a, require a lot more effort to sustain that eight-minute mile uphill. Uh, and that's where this notion of power comes in. So it's trying to you know, even out your effort regardless of the pace you're doing. If that hmm. makes sense. When they say power, they're talking about power generated? Force times distance over time. So it would literally be like if we're going to get geeked out on the on the physics of it. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to teach you physics, Craig. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I did lots of physics. The, you did a lot of physics. The, there. But the thing about force for running from that MGH perspective. each foot strike. Well, somebody who's heavier has to generate and will produce a lot more force. Exactly. Than lighter for the same pace. So, so. Two people who, one person who weighs 190 and one person who weighs 160 pounds, and they're both running the eight minute mile, the bigger guy is going to produce more power to do that, it's which kinda, is also true for cycling. It, well, uh, it's true, but cycling has, like, the weight is going to be less of a factor than it is with running. It, de I mean, it like depends. I mean, like, your rolling yeah, yeah, resistance on tires, etc., is not going to be as, it's going to be proportional, but not as big of a proportion. It's not as big. So this is new territory. Yeah. Um, we don't know much about it. I don't have personal experience training with it. I would love to get my hands on one. So Stride, if you're out there and you want to send us a device to check out and review, we would love to do that and to start playing with power. But it's something that's been used in the cycling and triathlon community for years. I've trained with it as a cyclist, so I definitely understand it. 
Um, but it'd be interesting to see how it works with the, the running game. Uh, David says, broke my femur in Boston this year. Just got to go ahead to do my first 20 minutes. Run slow. Any suggestions? Well, David, welcome back to the world. Uh, I know that that uh, broken femur is uh, gnarly. I would say, you know, working on some some regular strength training and cross training and, you know, integrating that in with your running. A lot of times when we think of our run workouts, it's an all or nothing affair. Yep. I'm going to run 20 minutes or nothing. But you could actually integrate a, a session where you're doing you know, little runs of 50 meters, 100 meters, and then you're combining that with some squats, some lunges, uh, some push-ups, and, and collectively, you've got this great session that's built a lot of fitness. You've exposed yourself to running without pounding the snot out of you. The other thing is that you're gonna be very uh, mindful of that femur, but you've been off of it for so long that your calves are a little tight and stiff and weak, your ankles, your feet, the same thing. So just, just being patient with yourself there. If you're really on a mission. You know, we filmed uh, a couple weeks back um, some swimming workouts for runners and some aqua jogging for runners, right? So yeah. that would be a good place to go. Are you ready to do the... Oh, the giveaway! Give one o'clock. Let's do it. Let's do the giveaway. All right. Hold on. It should have actually already closed, totally. Let's see, guys. We're, we're about to do the giveaway for the arm pocket. You guys have been so patient. All right. Here we go. And this is a magical drawing button. Ready? Oh, wait, hold on. Here we go. Da, 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 da. We're doing the drawing. All right. Oh, look who it is. Gary Scott. Gary, our Scott man. Richard. All right, I'm going to put your announcement From UK. on the widget. This is no avatar there. Yeah. Oh, without avatars. Okay, well, whatever. Gary, um, you, we, you should have your name, Gary S., is now announced as the winning entry. There were 1,500 entries, so congratulations. Um, and um, what will happen is that we are going to send your name and email to, uh, directly to Arm Pocket, um, and our friends are gonna, there are going to send you. Uh, you'll have to go choose because there's like a number of choices in terms of your types of phone, how big your arm is, etc. So yep. you can go and choose. And... Guys, never fear if you did not win, of which there were lots of you obviously that didn't win, uh, you can get an arm pocket by just clicking on the button below, and I'm gonna tell you a secret code, hold on. Oh, hey -o. Um, If you use the promo code TRE20, TRE20, yeah, all caps, you will get 20% off, so. Plus free shipping in the US, domestic. Um, Is that right? Yes. Right. Totally. I hope that we're allowed to give them that discount code. <laughs> I hope so. I'm not going to write it down, but you guys can find it. TRE20, TRE20. if you can find it, all caps. And we uh, may not be allowed to give We will to you. also be giving you our, uh, we will be handing out more arm pockets, not next week, but the week after. But next week, we're going to have a different giveaway. So every week, we give away stuff, and there's more and more stuff rolling in here. So the prizes are getting bigger and badder and better. So, they really are. Um, so next week we might give away a couple things actually. Oh dang! Yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah, people keep people keep wanting to send stuff to you guys. So we're gonna do that for you guys. It is past one o'clock. Thank you so much for signing out with us. As another always, week. another week, another live show is episode fourteen. Next week it's gonna be episode fifteen. Episode one five. Um, and if you guys have not noticed, hopefully our tech. Problems have kind of subsided at this point. We have a, a backdrop Yeah, now. we got a nice thing. Uh, I've got a special surprise for Craig coming next week. Hopefully you guys will all get to see it. All right. Okay. Uh, we just had someone say, I don't know who it was, but they said that the sound and audio was awesome today. Um, oh yeah, Garland says, by the way, video and audio quality was excellent. That's what awesome. we like to hear. Awesome, good. Well, thank you guys. Should we shut this thing down? Yeah, guys, it's time for the awkward closing dance. Again, thank you again to Arm Pocket for providing uh, that giveaway this week. We will send it to you, Gary, and then tune, tune in and next week for more stuff and uh, more Arm Pockets and more other stuff that we're going to be giving away. And, of course, to answer your questions. Woo. We'll see you next week, guys. Later, guys. Hey. Song. There we go. There you go. I want to stop this.